<laughs> Yo, welcome back, you crazy kinstones, to Minish Cap Randomizer. My name's Attacking Toucans, and let's start off the video by by petting a kitten. It's so cute. Aww. Oh, look at his face. So adorable. Yo, get out of my way. <laughs> he just jumps over me. That's great. Yeah, in my opinion, any Zelda game that has a cat in it is automatically just a tier above any Zelda game that doesn't have a cat. I'm sorry. It's just, it's just the way it is. I love cats way too much. Okay, so in the last episode, we found the flippers at the very end of the episode. And we also have a little blue butterfly that improves them. But this allows us to swim through the deep water really quickly. And we're able to access this chest. Ooh, the white sword. It's beautiful white blade sparkles with light. You can put away your grandfather's sword now. So this sword doesn't really have any special properties. It's just a stronger version of the sword that we had. So we're able to kill things more quickly. Always feels good to be able to slay the enemies. Ooh, falling down the well. You know, some references to Ocarina of Time. Oh, freaking Lacto, such a talented cow. Look at him swimming around. We stand a multi-talented king. Okay, so over here, there's like a little puzzle. There's these three rocks, and we have to push them all from different directions that we access from like other entrances. And once they're all pushed, we'll be able to get this chest that's over here on the peg. We're gonna have to work pretty hard for that one. There's definitely not a balance for the difficulty of chests and randomizers. Sometimes you have to work really hard to get a certain item and then it could be crap. And then sometimes you could find a chest like right in the middle of everything and it ends up just giving you the best item ever. <laughs> okay, let's roll, actually, I don't know. I feel like we should stay in the town for a little bit longer. There's quite a few things for us to do here. And I also personally like the town music a lot. Although it does get old in the long run, like if you play this game a lot, cause you spend a lot of time in the town. Ho ho, here we are. You've come to the fabulous Simon Simulations. Uh, so this is like a mini game pretty much, which reminds me of that like one anteater from Animal Crossing. <laughs> but we take a nap in this bed and we go into like a virtual reality dream world where we have to fight a little enemy gauntlet, which isn't too hard. We have spiders. Ooh, get these things off of me. Oh no, you're taking all my rupees. It doesn't matter because I don't care about rupees, but still don't take them from me. Yeah, I'm kind of getting bodied, <laughs> not gonna lie. Dude, the levers look vicious in this game. Look at how sharp the spikes are on the top of their heads. If we were in the Flintstones universe, I could totally see people using levers as a blender. <laughs> Just like put it in a bowl and then throw all your fruit on top of it. And it blends it all up. Okay, let's kill these things. Get out of here. So very easy minigame. This minigame typically has multiple stages, but in the randomizer, you only have to play it one time. Ooh, remote bombs. Okay, that's pretty cool. Let's get back. Oh! <laughs> Lactose is so cute, sleeping in the bed with me. That's adorable. Also, I want to give a shout out to Tina Talviki for creating this wonderful art of Sid and Lactose in the Minish Woods. It's so adorable and so well done. A great painting. I kind of wish I owned it so I could like put it in my house because it's like that good. I love it so much. Thank you so much for making that. It made my day. Okay, so remote bombs. Let me go ahead and show you what these guys do in case you don't know. So it's just a bomb on a timer. You get to control when it detonates. So if I run away, I can control the explosion. So that means you can like explode bombs really fast. Like say if you're fighting an enemy, which is very useful. Or if you want to like say, have a terrorist attack against a fruit stand and run away from it. You can do so with ease and you know, just act like nothing even happened. <laughs> But I'm really happy we found these because there's a treasure chest inside the school over here that I mentioned last episode that is way easier to do once we have remote bombs. Well, it's not easier, it's just faster. You have to blow up like all these rocks and typically you have to wait like five seconds for the bombs to explode, which can be very annoying. But with remote bombs, you can just go boom, 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 boom. Just get it over with really quickly. And this is also connected to the treasure chest thing we were doing earlier as well. Okay, and here we are. Arrow refill. We don't even have the bow yet. Honestly, like this randomizer is going well so far. We have some items that allow us to traverse pretty well. Like the flippers are really good. The grip ring allows us to do quite a bit. Um, Rock's cape opens up quite a few things and so do bombs. But we still have quite a few items left. 
We still can't do a majority of the stuff in the game right now. This teacher looks so freaking strict. It's like she wants to whip my ass with that little stick of hers. Damn, I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> I miss Miss Marie. <laughs> Mrs. Marie was the best. She would never hurt nobody. She just gives me joy pendants and gets really excited over everything that I show her. The best. We love Miss Marie. Okay, what is down here? Ooh, another sensei. Yeah! Mastery of the sword is mastery of the soul! I mean, that's kind of like anything with exercise, right? Anything that requires like physical exercise and like perfecting your body and like the connection between your mind, spirit, and your physical abilities. That's how you truly find yourself, right? <laughs> Man, we're getting way too deep. Some high thoughts on Minish Cap right now. Okay, what you gonna give us? Bomb refill. All right. See you later, Taylor Hicks. Thanks for nothing. <laughs> also, something I need to go ahead and mention real fast is last episode, I got a lot of comments of people saying that I should have used Rock's Cape in the Cave of Flames to get over that one gap with the lava. And very true, I could have done that. I, I totally messed up and just forgot that I could do that. But on the flip side, if I would have jumped over that, it wouldn't have even mattered because in the next room, for us to progress any further, we would need the cane of Pachi. So even if I did cross, we would have been stuck again. So we pretty much were at a dead end and had to leave regardless. But I still wish I would have jumped over that little lava pool to show how cool Rock's Cape is. It allows us to do some freaking crazy hardcore parkour. And these chests over by the moat are chests that I don't know if I ever even knew about when I played the game as a kid. I don't know if I ever swam over like past all these rocks. I always just kind of assumed that there was nothing over here. Which kind of feeds back into one of the last things I said where I mentioned that where I mentioned the overworld of this game is like a gigantic just puzzle. There's so many little things to find and little puzzles to solve. It's a pretty fun time. Pretty fun time. Blow up some rocks. We're gonna head up to the northeast now. Where we have some more mountains. If you look at the map, there's a lot of mountains on the north side. It almost looks like in order for them to build Hyrule Castle, they had to just like excavate out a gigantic mountain. Unless they built it in a valley in between the mountains, which actually makes a lot more sense. Okay, let's come swim over here and grab another heart piece. It does not hurt to get more heart containers. Okay, these dudes are trying to drop bombs on us. This is messed up. Wait, these... These enemies remind me of the enemies off of Pikmin 2, where they're able to just conjure bombs up out of thin air and then drop them on you. Okay, so last episode, we found the kinstone piece to get into the Veil Falls. It only requires one. But you see we have some other kinstone pieces. There are still eight other kinstones that we can find that are gold that allow us to get into two other sections of the map that I mentioned in episode one, but I just wanted to reinstate it repeat things to get it stuck in people's brains so that people aren't confused. Okay, so we don't have a lantern, so this cave is really dark. Which is very obnoxious. That's a bubble. Bubbles are just skulls on fire. <laughs> They're like terrifying concepts. It's a skull on fire. But then it's just called a bubble. Just a little bubble, it can't hurt you. Until it does, and then it takes away your ability to move for like 30 seconds, because when it touches you, you can't use any of your items or your sword, which is very lame. Don't like it. Oh my gosh, where am I? Is this a dead end? Oh, there's some stairs right here. Uh, and yeah, we're at a dead end now, because we can't duplicate ourselves yet. We need one more sword upgrade. So let's backtrack back down to the bubble room. <gasps> we love the bubble room. It's like that one room from Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory with the fizzy lifting drinks. Just a big room full of bubbles. Ooh. These choo-choos have some masks on. I think they're tough, don't they? Well, are they bomb-proof? Nope. Didn't think so. All right, we'll keep on climbing up. Eventually, we got to head back to Mount Crenel again because there's still quite a few chests over there that we haven't gotten yet. Oh god, a golden tektite. Let me just check this. Get away from me. This is harassment. Harassment in the workplace. My job is to make Let's Plays and I'm being harassed right now, so I'm being harassed in the workplace and I don't like it. 
Get away from me. Get away! Stop it! I hate the golden enemies. They are funny too. They're trolls. Straight up trolls. Ooh. Who brought the goods in here? Some pirate was trying to hide their treasure. It was their heart. They were afraid of getting their heart broken, so they just put it in a random cave and started a rock slide. Pussy. Okay. These rooms are all kind of connected. I don't know why you're able to walk outside to get to this upstairs room because the staircase will lead us like straight back down. And then, where does this staircase lead? Ooh, there's another room. This would be another crazy room to enter in Rupee Mania. There will be like eight randomized items. Be very bountiful. Oh wait, where am I at now? Let me just swim around here. Oh, this is where the waterfall entrance is. Cool. A fat bloopy. Oh my god, this bloopy needs to hit the gym or something. Jeez. <laughs> I've never seen a bloopy so thick. Do, 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 do. I love the bass line and like the Hyrule overworld music in this game. It's very powerful. It has a lot of gusto to it. Okay, excuse me, coming through, excuse me, sorry. Just, just pushing through, not meaning to hurt anybody. Okay, so we can climb to the very top of the mountain. <gasps> it's the giant Bigoron! I love this guy. The best thing about him is his fingers. Watch this. <laughs> there needs to be like some sound effect that plays with his fingers, like some twinkle sound effect or something. That's just too funny. Missed opportunity. Wow, and there's just a random tornado at the top of the mountain. Seems safe. <gasps> Going back in the air. That's some Airbnb right there. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Okay, so that's one of the mysterious cloud kinstone pieces. There is several more, and... We have to find them to do this area, so I'm going to go ahead and leave. Uh, actually, let's just go ahead and just use the Ocarina of Wind to teleport somewhere. So we haven't really found any items this episode that allow us to go to new areas yet, so I'm just going to go back to Mount Krennel because there was a few things I missed here. We still can't do the Cave of Flames, but we're just going to we're gonna go down the mountain now instead of going up it. In my opinion, going downhill or like down mountains is like way more dangerous than going up. Or for example, like climbing a tree upwards is like way safer in my opinion than climbing down a tree. For some reason, descending down things is just way more difficult. Oh, yeah, he didn't sell me anything good. Fine, I'll buy your arrows just so you can put food on the table for your wife and family because Sid has a really, really big heart. Now lactose on the other hand, kind of intolerant. Two hundred rupees, my face is beaming. Okay, we don't need to do this room, but I'm gonna come through this way anyways, just to show how this puzzle is done. I mean, it's not a complicated puzzle by any means. I, I just messed it up. I just said it wasn't difficult, and then I screwed it up. Okay, let's reset it. <laughs> that was embarrassing. Should I just cut that out and act like it never happened? Nah. I need you guys to see the realness of the sus play. <laughs> you need to see how screwed up I really am. I'm not going to treat this like social media and only show you the highlight reel. I got to include the worst moments too. Okay, we're going we're gonna to jump back down. So anyways, in the last episode, I talked a lot about the reasons why I really like Minish Cap as a game. And I also asked you guys, what are the things about this game that makes it a game that you really enjoy? And we got some pretty good answers. One of the answers was that the fights against the Dark Nuts are really enjoyable, which I would have to agree with you. The Dark Nut fights in this game are really challenging, but they're fair at the same time. They're not like bullcrap. Like the comment mentions in Zelda 1, the Dark Knight fights are just super annoying. 
But for a 2D Zelda game, this game has really good dark net boss fights. Uh, lots of people said the sprite work. Like I've mentioned the sprite work is really good in this game, and just it, it just has to be said again. The sprites in this game are beautiful. Really well animated. They looked so good on a Game Boy Advance screen back in the day, and they still look good on an emulator nowadays. Like, I was editing the YouTube video back, and I was like, wow, this game just aged pretty well, honestly. And it's just kind of cool how a lot of this stuff is inspired by Wind Waker. It's like Wind Waker 1.5, almost. Okay, we're breaking and entering. There's a lot of just random Picori that live around the world. In case you didn't know, I'm going to reiterate this again. These guys are called the Minish, but they're also called the Picori. They have two names. And another fact about them is adults can't see the Picori. Only children can see them. Which is why the king of Hyrule in this game ends up sending Link on a mission to save Princess Zelda when she's turned into stone by Vati at the beginning of the game because he's the only person who's able to see the Picori. So he's the only one that can interact with them to end up saving his daughter. Fun facts. Whoa. Okay, this room's gonna be way faster with Rock's Cape. No, just skip everything. Why not? Ooh, sped up our great spin attack. Do we have that? Okay, so I think this just allows us to do a spin attack way faster. Because you have to charge up your sword to spin attack in this game, and normally it takes quite a while, so getting the, the speed up is a nice upgrade. I'm not much of a spin attacker in this game. I'm not sure if spin attacking has that many uses, but I'm probably wrong. I don't know, there's probably some good uses. I'm still kind of learning the ins and outs of the combat of this game. I've done three practice randomizers of Minish Cap so far, and they, they all went really well, in my opinion. They were all super fun. But even though I've done three practices, there's still so much for me to learn about this game. And I'll end up streaming more Minish Cap randomizers. I'll do more Minish Cap randomizer series in the future. I think this game and the randomizer are good enough to continue doing more series of it in the future because, I don't know, Zelda randomizers have kind of become my thing on YouTube, and I enjoy doing them. They're fun to commentate and everything. Okay, so I planted the bean in there, but I kind of wasted my time. I did not need to do that. I kind of just did it because I wanted to show like how that's done because that's like one of those things that gets a lot of people stumped because at one point you have to go get some water from like a spring further down the mountain. You bring it up to water the bean that you're told to water. And like, I would always pour the water on the bean as it was sitting in this little area as a minish. And then I, it took me a while to figure out that you could pick it up and take it all the way out here and then water it once it's planted in here. So that's just a little something to keep in mind. And that allows you to go up the rest of the mountain if you haven't found the grip ring yet. Okay, I think that's all we can do on the mountain at this moment. And we still haven't found anything good, so... I think I'm just gonna head back to Hyrule Town again, and we're gonna start doing some Minish exploration. Which is when the game gets really interesting. Okay, so where's the nearest Minish jar? It might be in the cafe. Look at this Goron selling the Kinstone pieces. There's no purpose for us to buy these. In fact, for the randomizer, they just took red, blue, and green Kinstones out of the game completely. Like if you pick one up, it doesn't even go into your inventory. Because normally, if you click on your kinstone bag, which turns into the tingle trophy once you find it, you see all the kinstones you have. And we would typically have like green, blue, and red in here, but they're all just like taken out of the game since it doesn't affect the randomizer. Unless you choose the option where kinstone fusions are turned on, which I'll have to do at some point. Okay, so this is a blue pot right here. And if I get the can of Pachi, I can flip this over and it'll turn into a, a minish portal that'll allow me to turn into a small little link. But, but that one is not flipped right to set up yet, and we don't have the can of Pachi. Um, this one's not flipped either. I know there's a pot somewhere we can enter. Oh, it's over here on the other side of the moat. Is this a moat? River? What would this be considered? Damn, that's a lot of water wheels. Do they have enough water wheels in this house? I can't tell. I think they need more, actually. Now, here it is. This is the one we want to go inside. Alright, so let's just like, kind of navigate around the carpenter workers. The gay carpenters, they're also in here. The gay carpenters are also in this game from Ocarina of Time. <laughs> I love it. I would like to apprentice the boss too, but he barely even notices me. It's because you're small and only kids can see the Minish. Sorry, little guy. I like your night piece though. 
Dude, chess is actually a really fun game. I've seen like a lot of Twitch streamers playing it recently, and I'm kind of tempted because I grew up playing chess with my grandpa a lot, and it just seems like it'd be fun to play on Twitch for some reason. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna push. Oh, I can't push these yet. I don't have the power bracelets. Dang. Okay, well, we'll come back to that. What I do want to do is we can swim across this river even as Minish Link. You would think that Minish Link wouldn't be able to swim through deep water, just because it seems like it wouldn't be possible for whatever reason, just because of Zelda logic, but he in fact can. Oh no, can I not get through here? Are you kidding me? I get, oh, I have to go all the way around? Jeez. Oh look, there's a little Minish standing by the well right here. We tend to stay inside a lot. Don't want to get trampled, you know? Not that being stepped on would kill us, but it doesn't sound fun, does it? I don't see how it wouldn't. I almost just got stepped on by the the mailman. I mean, he pushed me. Rude ass. That woman's still enjoying her cup of milk. I'm very happy for her. <laughs> so happy for her. A little chick. Eep. One of the minish, peep. It's not like my brothers. I won't chase you around and peck at you, peep, peep. Not only that, I also have some good info for you. Somewhere in Hyrule, there's a great fairy. Aw. What a wholesome little chick. Too bad I would probably eat him if I went to Chick-fil-A. <laughs> my bee. <gasps> oh my god, the cats like to play with the minish. Look at him wiggle his butt. Wiggle it. Hey, just a little bit. What you gonna do with that big fat butt? Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Uh, culture. It's fun. Good times all around. Can I talk to the puppy? You ought to be careful when you're running around. You're awfully tiny. And not all dogs and cats are nice like me, Wolf. <laughs> Some are. So far, everybody's been pretty nice to me. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, is this the room? <gasps> this is the... These are the evil chicks. That's what the chick was referring to. These chicks try to kill you. They try to peck you. No! Let's go up top. There's a cuckoo. Well done of you to get here, Brock. I have secretly taken possession of Angie's... Wait, is that a typo? Her name's Anju, not Angie. Excuse you? No, I didn't steal it, you rude boy. I just borrowed it secretly. <laughs> okay, that normally gives you a kinstone piece. So yeah, the randomizer taking out the kinstone fusions does cut out a lot of the content to the game, which is why I eventually want to do a randomizer as well with the kinstone fusions. But I felt like it was better off to start off Minish Cap Randomizer series with like a more simplistic setting. Because that's kind of what I did for Ocarina of Time Randomizer. I started off with like the basics so people could like keep up. And then I made them more complicated as, as the series went on. We got a book! The Legend of the Picori! Can I read it? I want to read the library book, dang it. Okay, so that book is actually part of one of the most notorious side quests in the whole entire game. There's the side quest where you have to find three library books scattered around Hyrule. And your first time playing the game, doing that is an excruciating process. It absolutely sucks. You just like, you're having to look around the world so long to like figure out what to do. And it's kind of like arbitrary what you have to do. And it's just like, it gets really confusing. Which, uh, one of the nice things is it does cause you to do a lot of cool overworld exploration, but it definitely breaks up the game and makes you kind of feel like things are taking a little bit too long at times. I do think it's a really neat feature that you can go up into the, the rafters and see the Picori just living up here like mice. All the food and bread that they steal to keep themselves nourished. They even have some cheese. Ugh, bread and cheese, what a great combination. Every one of these breads is delicious! But do you have sourdough bread? Wait, no, 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 no. Do you have Cheesecake Factory bread? That's the real question. That stuff is good. Isn't PETA cute? PETA? Oh, I think PETA is the name of one of the bakers. That is a cute name, honestly. And PETA bread is also delicious. But I like how you can see the lower section of the bakery from up here, but there's like some depth of field, so it's kind of blurred out. So freaking charming. This game is so wholesome. There's also some good music too. Is this the Picori Festival music? Which reminds me, I have some more comments. <laughs> um, so somebody said that their favorite thing about this game was the music, which I think I mentioned this, but for a Game Boy Advance game, the music slaps pretty dang hard. Like it has some good bass, especially in the, the Hyrule like overworld area. It just, 
It just sounds so good. And then also somebody else said they liked the Minish Dungeons, which I agree. Once you're in the Minish Dungeons, it's like a regular dungeon, but a lot of the enemies are larger and you kind of feel like you're small and they like kind of played with what they could do having Link be in a small version of himself in a dungeon where everything is larger than him. Just cool. The different perspectives that this game offers. I still think it would be really, really amazing if they brought the Picori back in Breath of the Wild 2. Because I was like thinking about it and I was like, are they going to have a different overworld map for Breath of the Wild 2 or are they just going to use the same one again? Oh, I already have hot spring water. I could have actually watered that bean. I was very unaware. I'm going to get some more water real fast. So I need to put a fire out inside this house over here. But yeah, so I think Breath of the Wild 2, they could use the same overworlds as Breath of the Wild 1, but they could just add some extra depth to it by doing two things. One, you could add some like islands in the sky and then give Link a loft wing and you could like fly around the world map, which would allow you to get around even faster and it'd be really fun for, for exploration and there'd be like some sky worlds. Then you could also add the Picori and you could have some areas where you shrink down and like you go inside a single tree and there's like a whole civilization inside of it. So you could add like brand new cities and stuff to the game without having to create like whole new sections for cities to exist in the first place, if that makes sense. I know it kind of dates the video talking and speculating about Breath of the Wild too, but it, it's just so fun. I can't, can't resist. I can't help myself. Oh, real quick, let's go ahead and drop off the key with Talon and Malon. There you guys go. Don't lose it again, because I'm not going to help you again. Thank you so much, Barry Sid. Come visit us again so I can suck your dick. And I think that's a good comic question of the day. What is a mechanic from a pre-existing Zelda game that you would love to see represented in the second Breath of the Wild game. Elaborate and have fun with this answer. I think this is a really cool discussion. Uh, I'm gonna head back over to Lake Hylia. These pastures are so green. This game is very, very saturated, which I love. It just looks it's so bright. Playing this game definitely cheers me up. Okay, made it all the way around. Oh, here we are. Lake Hylia. Of course we had to pay homage to Lake Hylia. Such a beautiful lake. Wouldn't trade it for any other lake in the world. Okay, in this little tiny pool right here, we can dive. Oh, dive, there we go. We got five arrows down there. Not much of a use that is. And oh, we can like swim around here now. We don't have to use the <laughs> rock's cape to get around everywhere. I can't believe we like traversed through this whole entire area with a cape and then right afterwards found the flippers. It's just like insulting, man. That's just a, it's like an insult, man. Not good, not good. Um, actually, is there anything else I can really do back here right now? Not really. Okay, I'm gonna finish things off by coming to this wind crest down in the Minish Woods because I'm pretty sure there's like an easy few chests around here. Let's go back to being a small little bean. I wonder how tall Link is right now exactly. Like how big the Picori are. And we can probably figure that out by like comparing the size of Link to like one of the modern, like everyday objects inside one of the Picori houses. Like Link was, wasn't quite as tall as the knight piece from the chess set inside that one house. Ooh, let's bring out the cape again. Shortcuts. Ooh, no! I hate ice physics so much. Whew, don't get away from me. Don't want to deal with these things. They remind me of swooping snitch bugs from Pikmin. 50 roops. Roop, there it is. Roop, there it is. Okay, I'm actually just gonna... <laughs> I'm gonna be lazy and quick warp out of here. Bring myself back up here. Oh, okay, maybe this wasn't faster. There's still one more chest. I thought we were going to end up like, I don't know. <laughs> it's okay, Lactose. You don't have to be sad that the episode's ending, boy. I know, it's it's so sad. Blue later bugs. Later bugs. All right, here it is. Last chest of the episode. Hopefully, we make it count. Is there enough enemies in here? God damn. Arrows. Okay, definitely not worth it. That was not the best. 
It's okay though. Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and end this episode here. We honestly are at a point where we didn't like find anything useful this episode. And the first two episodes were just so bountiful. Like, I guess it was only a matter of time before we started not getting that many great things. Hey, but we got remote bombs. That's kind of cool, I guess. <laughs> but anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that thumbs up button for me. It helps me tremendously. And I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.